Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. So first today, um, well, in a moment, I'm going to have a look at this puzzle that we've been sent by um, Mark Van Von Deer. So thanks very much for sending it, Mark. Um, he's struggled with it, I know, and um, we're going to have a go. Um, but I'd just like to introduce you to some of the things you could be doing in puzzling at the moment, because it's quite an interesting time. Now, first of all, um, this puzzle, I'm going to be struggling a bit with the graphics. So what I've done is put it in Excel. And here are some of the things I'm going to just briefly talk about. Um, I'm sorry about this Excel. It's quite hard to read some of the smaller numbers, but you know, do feel free to take a screenshot of that picture and then come back to this one when we're solving to see what, what those numbers are. I apologize about my lack of graphic skills. Um, this puzzle, I believe, according to Mark, comes from Rohan Rao's blog. He publishes occasional puzzles, and um, he's a very good solver of puzzles. Um, which one's he? This one. So that's Rohan. He's um, one of the best solvers in the world um, from India, and I believe he publishes these puzzles. So I hope I'm crediting the right person um, when I say that's him. Otherwise, he's published the rules of group sum Sudoku only. But I think the puzzle comes from him. It looks like his formatting. Um, so that's quite an interesting site to have a look at. But there are some things going on at the moment in the world of crosswords. And um, there's always ongoing Matt Gaffney's weekly crossword contest. Matt's up to puzzle 548 out of a planned 1,000. That's one a week. Now, um, his puzzles do cost $26 US dollars a year. Um, but I'm a big fan of them. They get harder during the month. And... November has finished with three doozies, of which I've only got one right. So, pretty tough stuff. Um, then, my own magazine, not just mine, but um, there's a group of us who edit The Magpie. And December has become a month in which the editors create an issue. So, all the five editors contribute puzzles. Um, and this time, for the first time, the puzzles are all um, connected in a way that there's a, there's a kind of meta puzzle afterwards called a magpie treasure hunt. Um, we st now, I do urge you to take part. Yes, I've compiled one of the puzzles. That might be an incentive or disincentive, um, as might be the fact that the magazine costs um, 40 pounds sterling for the year. Although we would send you, I think, a one-off issue for um, four pounds or something like that. So do do have a look. We'll put up all the websites on um, the page. And the other puzzle event, called puzzle event, is um, a sort of puzzle advent calendar by Dan Peak, who is uh, so, so someone I've met. So, uh, Go close to calling him a friend. Um, I don't see him that often. But Dan writes puzzle hunt style puzzles. They're very good. Um, and for instance, today's, Simon had to go at the first two days of December and pronounced the puzzles excellent. Um, I've had a go at this third one and it's really good as well. I have to say this is, this is a heck of a puzzle. So, um, do feel free. It's called triplets with two Ps. And that's the whole puzzle. You kind of have to work out what to do. Um, I think we're told that the solution is eight letters long there. But it'll take you a while to get there if you have a go at that. But very rewarding. Lovely puzzle. Um, so that's going on as a sort of advent calendar, as I say, all through um, December. Or until Christmas anyway. And here are the... Um, here are the URLs for those four things. Now, why would you do things that cost money when there are things that are free, like Rohan and Daniel's stuff? Well, um, it's not a lot of money. And the buzz of kind of competing with people at the same time and joining in a group thing is quite significant. So, you know, I frankly, I recommend all of those sites. Um, I'll try and post links in the uh, text under the video today. So there we go. So now I'm going to have a look at this puzzle 
um, that was sent in. Maybe, maybe it's worth just trying to put the puzzle up in the corner. Is this going to work? No, okay. And then I could close that right down. And there we go. Okay, so I'll be solving here. But if you need to see what the numbers in the circles are, and you probably do, they're over here. So <clears throat> where to start? And I mean, this is a fascinating puzzle because where to start is the hard thing. Now, the rules are, it's a bit like killer Sudoku in that this 12 here, for instance, in a circle, means that these four squares surround, that are covered by that circle add up to 12. And that's the only rule, basically. So those add up to 12, those add up to 25, those add up to 28, etc. There's no given numbers in the grid, just those circles all the way around it. Um, and it's quite a tough puzzle to start, but once you see the start, then it's not so bad. And in fact, these 12s are where to begin. We've got 12, 12, 12 in this corner, and 12, 12, 12 in this corner. And they kind of react very much together. So it's worth knowing that the only two possible combinations of 12 in the same cell, in the same box rather, are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 6. Now, what do I mean by in the same box? Well, this 12, there are many more possibilities because it could be made up of two twos and then, a, well, even two, a three, and a, what does that leave us with? Five or one and seven because numbers can be repeated once the cell once the circles go over box lines but when the circle is within a single box and there are quite a few of those provided here then the numbers must be different so we established that 12 can only be made up in one of these two ways one two four five or one two three six now that tells us that one and two are definitely in this group, along with either 4, 5, or 3, 6. Now, what I originally thought was that that meant that this cell, which is also covered by a 12, and this cell, which is also covered by a 12, would have to be either 3 and 6, i.e. the numbers not in 1, 2, 4, 5, or 4 and 5, the numbers not in 1, 2, 3, 6. But in fact, 7 is a possibility too. Now, and... Actually, I think 8 is 2. 8, 1, 1, 2 is possible. So that's something that we will have to bear in mind. But 1 and 2 have to be within this, gr this group of cells here. And that means this cell and this cell cannot be 1 and 2. Now, the next interesting number to notice is the 20, ooh, the 28 that I'm just moving there, that's in this group here. Now, that 28... Um, or rather, sorry, sorry, this 25. Now that 25 includes two of the numbers that are making up 12. And we've kind of established that one and two are there. So the smallest number this cell can be is a three. And if that's a three, then the most that you can get into these two cells is eight, because three there, say one there, maximum of eight there and that leaves 17 for these two and that is a real key that means those two must be 17 these two have to add up to eight although we don't know what combination yet and these two therefore must add up to four because the this group of four makes 12 so these are one in three in some order now we established that this cell can't have a 1 or a 2 in it because they must be in this group. So that one's the 3 and that one's the 1. Um, and this group must be 1, 2, 4, 5 because it can't have a 3 in it now. And now we've got something to work on. Now don't fall into the trap of thinking that this must be a 6, as I said. Um, it doesn't have to be. It can't be an 8, however, because there's a 2 minimum here. So it could be six or seven. And frankly, whichever one of those is, this can't be as high as four, because if it was six, four, those would have to both be ones to make this 12 work. So that must be the two. And that's restricting our options considerably. And we're getting some numbers in the grid here. Now that two takes out these three cells in this box here. 
and therefore we're left to either put a 2 in one of those, but that's impossible because this cell, this group adds up to 28. We've already got 17, so these two make 11, and if they had a 2 in, they'd have to have a 9 in as well. So 2 can't be there either. So 2 must be in these two cells here, and because we know they add up to 8, they're 2 and 6. So we've got some progress again here. Now, after that, these two, as we said, add up to 11. And they can't have a 9, an 8, or a 6 in, so they must be 4 and 7. And that makes these three 1, 3, 5 in some combination. And that's restricting this one that was 4 or 5. So we've got that 1, 2, 4, 5 there finished off now. Now, what else do we know here? Um, this is quite interesting. Now, 8 and 9 have to be up here somewhere. Or rather, this group of three cells have to be 6, 7, 8, and 9 in some order. But let's start with this 23. Now, we've already done 11 of it. We need another 12 there. If this was a 6, then these six cells would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These three would have to be 7, 8, and 9. And to make 12 here, we couldn't do it because 7, 8, and 9 would already have been used up in this box. So that can't be the 6. It must be the 7. And that means that 6, 8, 9 go in these three corner cells. So now we've got 7, 2, 4, 1, 3, 5. These three along here are 6, 8, 9 in some order. And the 12, we've freed up the 7 to appear in the 7, 5 combination there. And we know that which order they're in because of this 5 we've done earlier. So there we go. Now, this cell here, 1, 2, 3, or 4 are all possible at the moment. Let's, let's try and work out what it might be. Um, 25 is the total, so if that was with 9 and 8, it would be a 1. If it was with 9 and 6, it would be a 3, that's possible. If it was with 8 and 6, it would be a 2, that's possible. So it's 2 or 3. Um, I don't know which yet. Where should we go next, I wonder? Now, it's quite interesting down here. Because once we've got this 7 and 2 in place, that's going to fix the sum of these two. They have to be 3, so that has to be 2 and 1. That means that these two have to add up to 12. Now, we don't know what they are yet. But we do know that this group makes 23. And it must have a 3 and a 4 in it because of this 3 and... Oops because of this 3 and 4 here, stopping 3 and 4 being in there. This group has to have 3 and 4 in. In fact, it has to be 3, 4, 7, 9. So the other numbers, 5, 6, 8, are down there. These ones, oh, in fact, yes, 3, 4, and, 3, 4 7, and 9, and the top two make 12. So they must be 9 and 3. We don't know the order yet. 4 and 7, we do know the order because we've got 7 above. Um, and that's 11 to go with another 14 here. Now, the important thing is that we know 279 appear in some order down there. So the 14 here must be made up of 6 and 8. And that leaves us with either 3 or 4 here. Um, and not quite sure what's going on for the rest. Actually, well, 1 and 5 must be down there because of the 1 and 5 in column 2, so that's 3 or 4 as well. Now, this, this circle here says 28. That's a big number. So it makes it feel likely that that's 9 and 7, and that would leave that to be 12. But we can actually try and rule something out. So it can't be 7 and 2 here, because that would leave that pair to be 19. That's impossible. However, 9 and 2 would make that one 9 and 8, adding up to 17. That would make this one 1 and 2. That would make this pair add up to 9. That would make this one 1 and 2. But by exactly the same logic up here that we established that the corners couldn't be 1 or 2, because 1 and 2 must both appear around this 12, this can't be 1 or 2. So they can't be 1 or 2, and that knocks us all the way back here 
these cells can't include a 2. Um, sorry, I'm using the other style there. So that's the 2. Now, what about these four here? Um, now, the only possibility is if that number and that number are the smallest possible. Because if either of them was bigger, it would be too bigger. One way to look at this is odds and evens. That's even, that's even, that's odd. The whole thing adds up to an odd number, so this cell must be even. So that fixes that as four. And in fact, these do have to be the smallest now, because this whole group adds up to 19. We've already got six. We need another 13. That's seven and six. So making good progress down that side. And now this same double pair logic is going to help us again. So these two add up to 12 to make this 28. If they're, tw oh, sorry. If they're 12, then this pair is eight. That pair adds up to four. So that's got to be one and three. In fact, the eight now has to be two and six. It's the only thing that could fit in the box. And this pair adds up to eight. We've already got a seven and a five up there, so we know that this pair is a two and a six as well. And by the same thing that we just went through a moment ago, this can't be two. So that's the six, and that's helping us fix these other two and sixes in the middle box there. So, decent progress again. Now, because of that six in this box, we know that this group of this 12 here is represented by 1, 2, 4, 5. So this cell here must be 3, 7. They're the only possibilities left. We've got 8 used already there. So we've got 2, 1, 4, 5. This one can only be 1 or 4 because of the 5 above it. This could be any of 1, 4, 5. This can only be 1 and 5. And that's interesting because that can only be 1 and 5. So if those two can only must be 1 and 5, this can't be 1. And that fixes this one. And that does fix this as a 5. Um, and what else have we got now? Now this group's going to be 12. But we don't know quite what the order is. Let me just see. Oh look, 8 can't be in those 3. Oh! That's quite alarming. Yes, 8 can't be in those 3, so it must be in these 2, which add up to 12. So that's 8 and 4. There's a 9 there. Um, these must be 7, 8 in some order. And this one can't be a 7 anymore, so it's a 3, which is kind of what seemed the most likely thing anyway. Now, what can we do with this 28 here? We've got that it either... It's either, we don't quite know whether this is 17, 15, or 14, um, but that would leave various possibilities. Let me, let me just see if I can figure out something slightly better. Oh yes, we, we could limit this a little. Um, this was 25, so it was either 7 and 3 with the 6, 9, or 7 and 2 with, and that doesn't work, does it? Seven and three is possible. Is, have I got something wrong? Yeah, seven and one is possible, but the one's gone. Seven and two isn't possible because they'd have to be seven and nine. You can't have a seven in the same box. So in fact, that's seven, three. This is six, nine. In fact, we know the order because there's a six now down below. So they're resolved. That's eight. So, that pair adds up to 14. This pair must also add up to 14, but we don't yet know whether it's 6, 8, or 9, 5. This pair must, must add up to 11. This pair must add up to 8. Now, we know that this pair that adds up to 8 can't have a 7 in because of the 7 there, and it can't have a 3 in because both the columns have a 3 in. So it must be 2 and 6. Now, this pair we said adds up to 11. Can't be 3, 8, because again, there's two 3s in the column. Can't be 2, 9 or 6, 5. It must be 4, 7. And because
because of that 6, we know that this pair that adds up to 14 is 5 and 9. We've got 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 2, 4 up in that box. So, again, carrying on, 9, 5, 4, 7, 2, 6. These are 1, 3, 8. Um, but we don't know the order yet. And these ones here are 5, 7, 9. And again, we don't know the order yet. Although we can rule out a couple of them, a couple of possibilities from these 8, 9, 4, 7. Now that 4, 7 has in fact been resolved by the 7 next to it. Um, and this 3, 1 down here has sorted out this box of 5, 3, 1. So that's quite helpful. That sorts out this. Five, and now we've got 286 to fill in in the central box, and we're finally making some progress there. That's quite nice. Um, this one now can't be 8 or 6, so it's 5, and the 6 in the central box has resolved the rest of those. That sorts out this 831 as well, and we are really, I think, finishing largely now. Um, we've got 3, 9 in there in some order. Ah, in fact, 9 must be up here, so it's that order. Um, that can only be a 1. And that 1 and 4, actually, I should have spotted that a while ago. That's resolving that 2. Um, what else? That 8 there sorts out 7 and 8. I mean, it's a really prettily constructed puzzle. We have, I think, used all of the um, all of the constraints now, all of the circled numbers, and uh, with some good effect. So, you know, do if you're not sure why I'm putting in any of these numbers, please believe me that they're forced, and do slow down the video and stop it if you're not absolutely sure how that's occurring. But uh, I think it should be fairly clear if you, if you take a moment to have a look at the grid to see how they're forced exactly. And there we go. That's the end of the puzzle. Very nice one. Thanks to Rohan if indeed it was his puzzle. Thank you to Mark von Deer for sending it in. Um, thank you for watching. Do try some of the sites I've mentioned and uh, enjoy puzzling as we come up to Christmas. I'm never quite sure why puzzle setters like myself, assume you'll have more time over Christmas to solve puzzles, but that is the general assumption, so there tends to be a complete feast of puzzles. Um, I'm even published as a compiler in the Spectator magazine this week, so if you're in Britain, you could buy that as well. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.